Good morning. Um, it's getting cold in the mornings, although no frost this morning on the windshields or anything else. So we've got, it looks like today to do some tillage and tomorrow it's supposed to rain. Now the last time they said it was supposed to rain, it didn't rain. So who knows? But we're going to try and finish up as much tillage as possible today before that possibility of rain. Unfortunately, not in this beast. As much as I would love to be able to run this all day, that is not going to happen. The dealer is going to come and pick it up here, take it to another farm to demo. So congrats, whoever this is going to. I don't know where, but somewhere between here and the dealer, they said we got somebody else who wants to demo it. Great. So we do have to get our ripper unhooked. So that's what we're going to do here this morning. And then uh, maybe take that one out and go do some chiseling or dad is running the disc maybe we'll go run that i don't know brock's gonna be here in a little bit and he's gonna i'm gonna let him pick whichever one he wants to run and i'll go run the other one well I'm not going to say I'll never drive a 9RX 640 or 9RX period again, but it'll be the last ride for a while, I'm guessing. That's okay. It was fun, man. This was awesome. Thank you again, Greenmark, for uh, giving me a chance to drive this awesome, awesome tractor. So it is here and ready for you guys to take. I am going to uh, pull my GPS receiver off, and we're going to clear the coverage data out of the display not that i really care if somebody knows that i ran this in some fields but let's see if i can figure that out all right we're gonna let brock run the 8rx today so we got it fueled up and um we're flipping a few of these shovels so we run these four inch twists on our uh, sunflower here they look like this this one's got a nice point on it yet but some of these are sort of rounded and thin eventually this will flop under and break off so they're reversible we'll just flip it and put this side down and uh that's good to go so just like he's doing now we just throw new bolts on them because the bolt heads wear here So Brock is off. We are going to go take over for Dad. Dad's running the disc, and I'm going to take that over and let him go do. I don't know what he wants to do, but whatever he wants to do. And we're going to spend the day doing some tillage. It'll be fun. So Dad's been keeping this disc moving all weekend, and he's gotten a lot of our corn stalks disc down. He's about got this field done. This one was the field. This is where we finished harvest? No, it wasn't where we finished. But we're Yeah, it was towards the end here. Um... This one's 128 acres and looks like he's just got the wedge to go. So we're gonna jump in and take over for him. Put the new blades on our disc. Everything seems to be working fine. Dad's been uh, yeah, said he had one uh, bearing hanger come loose and fall off, we had to replace, but other than that, I haven't had any issues. No bearings have gone out yet this fall, so you know, that's positive. Maybe they had three on the, the old bearings. All right, well, seat time in the old 8R. I love this tractor. I know, it's not new. It's not new anymore by any means. But uh, this one, this has been my baby since we got it. Like, I was the one that primarily drove. This is basically what we do with the 8RX now. And uh, I really, really like this tractor. Seat needs a little lubrication. It's squeaky, but it swivels easy, steers nice, it's fun to drive. I love this tractor. Well, we finished up that field. The dad was in there, and uh, right next door started in on the next one. So we got 62 acres here. I've um, turned the speed up just a little bit from where Dad was running it. We're going fast. This tool is meant to go fast. It is, uh, it's, a, it's a disc, but they call it a vertical tillage disc, a VT. 
They don't call it a disc, and they call it a vertical tillage tool, but it's a disc. But uh, the gang is on a shallow angle. There's a shallow concave blade, uh, which allows you to, to go a little bit faster with it. It's designed to be pulled 8 to 10 miles an hour. So, um, yeah, we're, we're running it there, and you can cover ground in a hurry with it. We're only 29 feet wide, but I think... We have 27, 27 and a half foot track spacing, something like that. Um, but yeah, it does a pretty good job. The entire purpose for this pass is residue management. So we've got all these corn stalks and all this residue out here and the root balls and the bottom of the corn stalks that are all still in the ground. And uh, we need to get that stuff to start breaking down and releasing the nutrients that are tied up into it. Uh, for our soybeans next year, corn two years from now, and the corn stalks will break down much faster and better if we put them in contact with the soil. And so we're we're out here sizing them. The blades are cutting this stuff up, and it's knocking those root balls out and the crown of the roots to get everything laying flat with the soil. We're we're not moving a lot of dirt, but we're moving just enough dirt horizontally or. or um, throwing it to the side just to cover up those stalks to keep them from blowing off the field. I've always felt like this tool does a pretty decent job. Uh, it's not the greatest. There are better options out there, but at the time when we bought it, it, it's not a bad tool. If we have our bearing issues fixed, if you've been following along, you know that we um, put all new blades and bearings on this this year, and the old ones were giving us all kinds of trouble. We were, we were having bearings go out all the time. Uh, hopefully, that makes this a lot nicer tool to operate. Hello, good afternoon. Um, we're uh, in the tractor again today. Nathan told me to record a little bit. It's nothing exciting, so here we go. We're uh, in a 40-acre field right now, and we have another one right there. It's just right across the lane. That's I don't, I'm not quite sure how big that is. Not quite 40 acres, but... Uh, we're going to hit, try to get these two fields done today or close to it. We're chiseling, so it, it's slow going, but it's doing a good job. It's, it's, it's not doing bad. It's leveling it off pretty good. Not moving fast. Anywhere from four, if it's pulling hard, all the way up to, I don't know, I've, I've seen it some places, very few places where it can go six and a half, but that's as much as we have it it's as fast as we have it but very few places it going six and a half and there are some places where it is pulling hard so breaking up that compaction getting it nice and ready for corn next year so we will run the field cultivator over this in the spring to give it a nice seed bed but got to get the dirt compaction out of it air it out a little bit so we're just chugging right along see how long it takes us to get over this field or only going about six and a half acres an hour so we're getting there but it's slow going one of the nice things about it being really dry this fall or here in november at least is that we can go through a lot of the wet spots that we typically have to go around like this one full of weeds right in front of me we're heading right through the middle of it if we're going to get stuck it's going to be we made it camera died. I was using that and it made it halfway through that clip and died. So we switched to this one. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're we're getting our wedge now on this field and then we got to go to the other side and keep working across the There's a wet spot here too. I don't think this one's as bad. Fine. Fine. Yeah, we're good. We'll get them weeds down and seed it all for next year. Well, sorry guys, I haven't been filming, but uh, stopped on the end of the field here too stretch my legs and check everything over and I don't know if you can see it but that one right there that shovel there ain't nothing shiny on it we're uh we're missing it so I looked out in the field couldn't find it thought it was over there because that's where I just came up and uh I noticed another one was broken the one uh in front of it so I flipped that one already and uh I look out in the field some more and I found it. So we're gonna use some of the old bolts and put this one on the outside one. There's not much life left in these. I mean, yeah, but we're gonna put it on and keep going. But here we go. 
we'll put a shovel on. Uh, we got them on, they're all on, and uh, yeah, there ain't much head on those bolts, so we'll, we'll keep a close eye on that one, and uh, if it falls off, we'll catch it, and I already told Nathan, so I don't know if he's going to get me some more bolts, or just, he said keep an eye on it, so that's what we're going to do. Well, we've got some angled road. The road runs on an angle here, so these rows are point rows anyway, and then we're on an angle. Whatever. Anyway, we're about done, is what I'm trying to tell you. Let's see. Do I have a map? A little whole field? There. See? We're flying right across here. This does not take long. Cover some ground. It's uh, 28 feet wide, or 27 and a half, and 10 miles an hour. So we are averaging 31 acres an hour. 50 acres done, 11 and a half to go. Now with tillage, you always end up with some overlap, so uh, we'll probably do another 15 or so in this field, but about a half hour, we should be done. That's gonna be lunch time. Now, if I wasn't less than a mile from the farm, I probably wouldn't stop for lunch, we would just keep going. But I think I'm probably gonna run home real quick and I need to get some stuff. Uh, this week happens to be Thanksgiving. I've been tasked with cooking a turkey for Thursday. And I don't have a turkey yet. But there's a store that I could go buy one today. I might go do that. Just finishing the last pass on these endros here. We did good. It's uh, 11.59. So I'm going to head back or run to town. Do a little shopping real quick. And uh, it's lunch. We'll come back and we got to do this field right across the road. There's 65 acres there. It'll take just about as long as this one took. All right, lunch got, Thanksgiving dinner procured. I also bought a beef tenderloin because that's much better. Look at my hair. Oh, it's time for a haircut. But it's blowing in the wind, it's bad. All right, let's go spend the rest of the day in a tractor. So this field that we're in now, we're directly across the road from where we were this morning. Um, this is the farm that we have, or the field that we have, that the rows run kind of in two separate directions. And, uh, so we gotta we gotta we gotta do them in the right order so that we cover our ends where we're turning. So we're doing the rows going this way right now, and then there's behind us there the rows run north and south, and it'll cover the ends from where we're turning in the middle of the field. All good. 65-ish total acres in this field, and uh, it should take us uh, two hours, a little uh, two and a half hours probably. Get done. It's a little after one now, so sometime around 3 to 3.30 we'll be done here and on to the next one there's 36 acres just around the corner here well just checking back in with you still going still chiseling still in that same field but we're on the last pass so we did 38 39 acres in this field um, 245 now started um, 1030 so it's, it's taken a while, but we're not moving that fast. I mean, when you're chiseling, you're going slow. You ain't got a wide piece, but you're doing a lot of work. You're digging down six, eight inches and really ripping the ground. So we're making progress. We're moving right along. We're going to move to the next field, a smaller field. So I don't know how much we're going to get done. Um, hopefully all of it, but we're on the last pass. It's always nice when everything lines up good, but that's what all of steer is. And it's always nice to be in an 8RX. I mean, who would have thunk this year, 8RX doing tillage. My goodness, I'm spoiled to begin with with this in the grain cart, but tillage, absolutely. Well, got to the front of the field, and I just have those ends to do behind the house here. And I don't know if you can see it there, but right in the middle, probably not. You gotta look real close. There's a shovel sideways. So we have a broken bolt. I don't think I have any more. And then checking the toolbox. I know Nathan put two in there, but uh, we already had to change one. And yeah, so uh, I think we're gonna have to make a phone call, see if Mark or somebody's back at the farm because they ain't taking this back to the farm. Well, we're making some progress here. So uh, last year, I, uh, I did pretty well in a couple of, of uh, yield contests. Remember that? We had a, uh, a soybean yield contest through my seed company that uh, 
I, I did really well in in the state of Ohio. I also did really well in the NCG corn growers contest. And well, uh, the seed company kind of recognized me and they gave me these Bluetooth speakers, maybe two of them, one for corn and one for beans um, last year that I don't use Bluetooth speakers for very much. Like I just, I, they've been sitting in my, on my desk in the office with not much use. I finally found a use for them because in this tractor, it's too old apparently for my Bluetooth, my phone to connect Bluetooth, right? It's too old. Well, I mean, my phone does connect to the Bluetooth, but only for calls. It can't do audio, so I can't play music or my videos or whatever else. I can't play it through the speakers in the tractor. Enter Bluetooth speaker. Just sit that in here, connect my phone to that, and let it be the speaker. That works pretty well. I suppose I could buy a, uh, you know, there's an aux cord. It used to be when I had an aux cord plug on my phones, I could just plug it in that way. It doesn't do that anymore because my phones don't have an aux plug. Uh, I suppose I could buy a... Uh, a Bluetooth thing that would plug into that, I suppose. Kind of like when I was in high school and you had to buy a cassette tape with a string coming out of it so you could hook your CD player up to your car. You guys remember doing that? Yeah, that'll date you right there, buddy. Anyway, uh, this works really well. So I've been I've been doing that so I can listen to some podcasts and watch my YouTube videos. But I'm thinking about doing a live stream a little bit. Brock is uh, running the Ripper, or the, the, the chisel plow with the 8RX. And I uh, gave him a camera, so hopefully he's filming some stuff for you guys. And I said, hey, you want to do a live stream later? And he said he'd be open to it. So we might do that in a little bit here. I should also note when I said earlier that this was purely a residue management pass. Um, that's not entirely true, I guess, because it does move enough dirt to level the fields up some. So in some cases, we have a few ruts or some unevenness. Uh, generally not from this fall because it was so dry when we were harvesting corn at least that we didn't tear the fields up harvesting. However, there are a few places, especially in this field, like back there along those trees, that are typically wet spots in the spring and we made some ruts with the planter. And so this is helping to level that up. It just takes any of uh, the light surface compaction off uh, out of the ground. And, we are making a better seed bed for the beans in the spring. Now we are gonna run this tool over these stalks again in the spring, and that's more of a seed, bread, seed bed prep pass than this one is. This one is about getting the stalks to decay, getting them broken uh, uh, in contact with the soil so that they start to break down, the microbes can work on them, that kind of stuff. Uh, but in the spring, after those stalks have already broken down quite a bit, become brittle from drying out, and sunshine and everything else hitting them, uh, then when we run this tool over it, it just kind of obliterates anything that's left, works that top inch and a half to two inches of soil so you get a nice loose uh, seed bed to plant soybeans into. So um, it's, it's not a one pass, it's a two pass thing, but fortunately it's a fast uh, operation that we can cover a lot of ground and, and get it done pretty quickly. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Holt's just worn. I mean, my goodness. It, there's, there's not a head on it. So it went right through there. It's still there, but man, two new bolts. I don't know if there's any more. Probably, I'll probably just tell them to bring a handful. And that's the best thing. It'll be the easiest to do, and I'll have some extras. Done with this one. What time is it? Ooh, 3.38. Took me longer than I thought it would. Uh, did I tell you guys Brock was, was missing a bolt and had, yeah, I don't know. He had some and he used them and then broke another one or lost a shank or something along those lines. I'm sure he filmed it for you. Um, but anyway, Dad's running him parts. We are going on to the next field. Go. Go, go, go. Well, that's Mark right there. He brought me a right and a left shovel and some bolts for the... Ripper. So we got that put back together. We gotta to do this end and then we're gonna hop onto the other field. Here we go. This one is the field where we finished harvest. It's not the last field of disc, but it is where we finished harvest. Also a big muck pocket here, kind of right where we're at now. You can see we go up a ridge, but there's a flat bottom here. Soft. I don't like doing anything in it, to be honest, but it did raise really good corn in the bottom of this dip. There's a lot of material here. We're gonna knock it down. Uh, this is not something that we would run a chisel through very deep. You'd always shallow stuff up, but the disc were only going a couple inches at the most anyway, so um, shouldn't have to worry about it here. But 
And then we climb up this ridge and we get up onto the crappiest clay knobs that we have. It's just this ground changes quickly and uh, drastically. Well, from the last time I talked to you, I literally did just these ends here. So four passes and we already have another shovel sideways. So we're gonna pull it over here to the next field we're gonna go to where there's no work ground and we're gonna put new bolts in that. Um, I'm guessing it's gonna be a fight from here to the end, but at least we still have the shovel. And yeah, but it's another one. We've used this tool more in the last three, four days than they have in the last, I don't know what Nathan say, four years, five years. Ever since they got that 2730, um, that's been their number one pillage tool, which it works great, so it should be. But you know, when you need this, you need it. And it doesn't do a bad job. It's just 2730 is bigger and yeah. So we're gonna get out and change the bolts again. Well, we're gonna go ahead and do a live stream here in a little bit, Brock and I together. So if you missed that, go check it out. Uh, but we are in this other field here. There's only 36 acres. This one won't take me too long, a little over an hour. We do have some wet holes that we farm around, just like the other fields, <laughs> that we should be able to go through and knock the weeds down and then not farm them again next year because they'll be wet in the spring. That's usually the way it happens. Wet in the spring, dry out in the summer, and then depending on whether we have a wet fall or a dry fall, the last two years it's been dry falls, um, we can get through them or, or not. So anyway, uh, I need to stop in the back of the field before I'm tied up on a live stream. You know. So, all right, I should have filmed this before I left the field, but uh, we got that one done. We're in the middle of a live stream, or we're at the end of a live stream, I should say. Heading back to the farm because this tractor needs fuel, and we're done in this area. Like, we have no more fields this direction. We do have 95 acres the opposite direction, plus 30 down the road from that. Um, that would be nice to get done. I was going to go do it tonight, but somebody, Brock over here, has to leave, so I gotta go take over for him. Chiseling is more important than the discing right now. So I'm gonna go over there and run that for a while. Um, you should probably have my road lights on. Um, yeah, but we're getting closer. All right, back to the park. All right. Um, well, we're done with the disc for tonight because Brock's gotta leave here in about a half an hour and uh, the per chiseling is the priority. So I'm gonna go over and take over for him. We're gonna take the fuel trailer over. I think he's probably got enough fuel, but I can't guarantee it. And the last thing I want is to be over there at midnight and run out of fuel or not have enough to finish. So I'm just gonna take the fuel trailer. We're gonna fill it up now. Uh, but like I said, I got a half an hour. It's 5.30, I'm gonna stop in and see my wife and kids and grab some food and then we're gonna go. He's a coming. He's working on a field on the other side of the lane over there, but he's got these ends all done, so I can't drive the pickup out there. So should be able to get close enough here. We got a nice long hose on our fuel trailer, 50 footer. It should reach. Fueling. Um, so you guys know that we've got this awesome boss fuel trailer that they uh, very graciously let us demo long term here since the spring or all summer. I'm going to give them one last big shout out here because uh, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, we sent them a check. This thing ain't leaving. We are keeping it this. So I do appreciate them letting us use it and try it out. Uh, we really liked it and uh, it's not going anywhere. We're keeping this. All right, done with that. We flipped a few shovels. Got everything pretty good. There's two more that are uh, either getting worn, but they're not worn out and I don't have any more bolts. So hopefully they'll do about 40 acres because I think that's what we got to do. Thanks, bro. You're welcome. All right, when are you coming back? Not tomorrow. All right. Ooh, this is a nice tractor too. I do like this one. We set up so high. I feel like a king up here. All right, well, this is uh, this is not pulling easy. 
can see that already and I'm on my first pass. I don't like it bouncing like that. That's not good. Sometimes it, it usually doesn't last too long. This tool's pretty good at not bouncing, so. Yeah, there it goes a little more. Uh, anyway, looks like we're striping this out. Uh, let's see. Oh, not that button. This button. This button. Ah, he's got the back part done and then half of this. All right, cool. We'll finish her up and then go to the next stuff. Down to the end rows here on this farm. Got a few spots to do, or just, yeah, ends along the sides here. Um, I am I'm dragging up a bunch of tree roots, which I'm surprised by, because, like, we've ripped this farm before, but every time I make that pass along the edge, I get a bunch of tree roots. I'll see if I can show some to you here in a minute. I don't know how well you'll be able to see them, but, like, right in there, there's a bunch of tree roots. We kind of drug up, and then if you look as we started to turn, there's a pile of them. why we're ripping this. It won't help the shading from the trees, but it certainly will help them from stealing the water and nutrients out of the field when the crops can't get it. It ought to be worth something. Okay, we are done here. So this was a uh, about 65 of the 95 acres. It's about 30 acres down the road. We're going to go and try and get it done. I don't know if we're going to get there tonight or not. It's 7.30 probably take us four hours over there so yeah it'll be 11 30 midnight we might make it although uh, the def tank is lower than i would like it to be right now and i didn't add any def because i don't really want def in this tractor over winter and this is the last of the work so i kind of thought we had plenty but now i'm not so sure that we have plenty all right so there's two fields here there's a lane right behind us that kind of separates them I just want to run, rows run this way. Uh, field looks like this. Now this is a house lot up here. We're gonna go do these short rows where the, the lights are gonna be shining right at the house now. We get there first, that house. Um, because it is quarter to eight. There's like a 90 plus year old lady that lives there and I don't want to uh, be shining my lights in her window at midnight when we're finishing this up. So we're gonna start there. This field has a big sand ridge up here, so there's a lot more elevation change to this than where we just were. There's a creek that runs along the back here, and there is some heavy ground, but this is a lot lighter right in here, so it should pull quite a bit easier. That last field that we were in, that pulled way harder than uh, than the field we did on Saturday with this tool did. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how much different this one is, different soil types and stuff. Already, it's pulling much easier here, I mean, we're going 6.4 where our set speed is. Over there, we were going four and a half to five most of the time, and just, we just didn't want the power to pull it. Well, developments here. One, we're watching football. Two, it's starting to rain. That's, uh, that's not good. Those are big raindrops and actually getting stuff wet, so hopefully we're not getting rained out, but it's possible here. And uh, three, we're talking talking to the, the kiddos, kind of. Hi, Mareli. It's, uh, it's not stopping. Not looking promising here. It's getting worse. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. Stuff starting to stick to my tires on the on the chisel. It's hard to see the tracks on here to see how bad it is. I've been watching the slip though. We're still, yes, yeah, it's creeping up. Yeah, there it's low, but it just depends. Um, you can see everything is wet on the chisel except for. Well, it's even getting there now. That cylinder right there in the middle, that's the cylinder that raises and lowers the whole thing. There's the only one on there. It's hot because there's hot oil in it, so it's been evaporating the water off and kind of the same thing going on with the hood up here, although it's changing too. The front of the hood where the radiator is and the fan's moving is is uh, staying dry and the back of it's wet, but I, it's not looking good here. It's got to stop raining real fast for us to be able to keep going. Well, after I filmed that last clip, it, it didn't stop raining, but it lightened up a lot and everything kind of dried off or the hood of the tractor dried off and then it's picked up again and then it lightened up and now it's picking up again and I don't know we're still going but we are starting to 
to get more mud buildup. We're starting to get more slip. It's getting a little more difficult. Okay, we're up to 12% slip coming up the hill now instead of eight like the last time. I'm trying to finish this field. We don't have very much to do here, kind of down in this finger. Um, but we do have that one to do, and well, I don't think we're gonna make it tonight. So I don't know, I'm gonna go as long as I can, and then I gotta make the decision, do I try and call dad and have him come pick me up? Or do we take the tractor home? We're probably nine miles, eight, eight to nine miles from the farm to come back over here for 15 acres be a pain in the butt I am uh, doing the endros here but it's getting much more difficult our slip percentage is going way up there's a lot of mud sticking to the tracks I think we're gonna have to quit when we're done with this these ends hopefully I can finish them but so close we're so close to being done see what I mean 37 there that's not that's not good well every time I think that we're getting rained out the rain stops it has completely stopped and it's drying up but it is already very slippery and greasy and I think we're gonna have to quit one more pass on these ends and I got this side done but the grass is really wet I don't think we've gotten a lot of rain like I don't think it's even been a tenth of an inch but it soaked up the, the stubble in the top layer of dirt enough to make it slippery, so... I mean, it's still plenty dry underneath. It's not like we couldn't do it. If we don't get any more rain, we'll come back right first thing in the morning and finish this, but... I don't know. Yeah, there's still a 9RX in our driveway. Anyway, we, um... We're shutting her down for the night here. It's, uh... Not quite 10.30, I think. Something like that. Yeah, you can see we got her a little muddy out there. And you can't see it real well, but we got it muddy. That tractor and ripper did 86 acres today. That's a pretty darn good day. I covered about 150 with that one, and Dad was running it before I got there. So we covered a lot of ground today. We had a good day, got a lot done. Unfortunately, I wanted 11 more acres. There's 11 acres in that little field that's left over there, and we aren't going to get it tonight just got a little too greasy plus on the way home it, it it told me that the engine was derated due to um, low def so when we can get back over there if whether that's in the morning or if it rains more tonight and we can't do it tomorrow whatever um we'll throw a couple of gallons of def in i could change a uh, shovel or two on the uh, chisel plow there and we'll just finish it up it ain't no big deal turn the light off. Don't know why it's still on. And if we don't get there tomorrow or we don't get there at all, it's not the end of the world. So it is what it is. Um, yeah, we'll see what the weather's like in the morning with the rain and everything. We've got plenty of stuff to do. So um, I'm sure we'll probably make a video. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching this one. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll see you guys later.